O oh God. Thank you for the grace to see a new week, to come before you this week, Father God. Lord, we just honor you today. We thank you. Thank you for our loved ones. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for everyone that is connected to us under our sphere of influence. Father, thank you. Thank you that you've not allowed us to be overtaken by any evil, Father God. That is, thank you because you've given your angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. And Father, thank you because you have not allowed evil to befall us in any way. Lord, we honor you and bless you today. Father God, even as we go into your word again, we are asking, oh God, Father, that it is your word. Father, let your word do its work. Father, you say that your word you sent to us will not come back to you void. It will accomplish the purpose for which you are sending it. Father, let your word accomplish its purpose today. Father, speak to us, every one of us. Speak to us, O oh God. And Father, I submit my mouth, my faculties, everything in me to you right now, that you use me as your oracle, Father. Let it be your word. Let it be, Father, everything about you. Nothing, nothing of me, Father, everything about you. Your word. Father, that word you want somebody to hear today. Father, release it, O oh God. And let your name be praised, almighty God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So um, um, today we are talking about frustrating the grace of God. Frustrating the grace of God. So, um, and the area of grace we are talking about today is empowering grace. Because grace of God means so many things. But the particular area we are talking about today is empowering grace. So first of all, is it possible to frustrate the grace of God? Paul says in Galatians 2.21 that I do not frustrate the grace of God. Is part A of that B. Because he says that if righteousness comes by the Lord, that's the second part of it, then my, our faith is in vain. But it's that I do not frustrate the grace of God. Yeah, everything that God has given us is unmerited. But is it possible to frustrate the grace of God? Is it possible to be in a place where the grace, we are frustrating the grace of God. And it's as if the grace is not working. Therefore, we are now church changed and we are suffering as people in the world or we are not moving forward as we should. Praise the Lord. Let's quickly go to Ephesians 4, 7. Ephesians 4, 7. Frustrating the grace of God. So it's possible. And um, with this frustrating the grace of God also is the idea that we are accountable for what we are given in the kingdom of God. God expects us to account for the gifts because the grace of God, if you think about it, the grace of God is custom designed, made to fit us. Everybody's grace is, div is different. It says, unto everyone has been given the measure of, measure of grace, measure of uh, faith. But then it's custom built. Every single one of us is made to fit us, our personalities, our everything, everything we are. The grace of God is made to fit us. So, and the, the gifts are part of the grace. Every one of us has gifts that God has put as part of the grace of God. So, uh, before I read Ephesians 4 7, Webster's uh, 1828 dictionary says, uh, uh, gra defines grace as appropriately the free unmerited love and favor of God, the spring and source of all the benefits men receive from God. So you see, the free unmerited love and favor of God, then the spring and source of all the benefits men receive from God. So the gifts are part of the benefits, praise the Lord. So it's all part of the grace of God. So Ephesians 4, 7, what does it say? It says, um, there, there is one, no, okay, sorry, I'm reading the wrong one. Um, but unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Everyone, uh, unto every one of us is giving grace. So there's nobody without grace. Even our salvation, the beginning of grace is even our salvation. For the uh, grace of God has appeared to all men. It's the, the salvation is all about grace. Everything that God gives us is all about grace because it's unmerited. We didn't work for it. It is given to us. God just gave it to us out of his good nature. God is love. God is good. So he gave us all those things. So he says, unto, for unto one, unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And we have gifts. Praise the Lord. Gifts is given to us. But then, are we accountable for the things that God has put in us? That's the area we want to be a bit today. Are we accountable for these gifts? Is it possible that we can just allow it to stay there and then? And then at the end, is it okay with God? 
Is it really okay with God? What's accountability? The state of being liable to answer for one's conduct. Liability to give account and to receive, to receive a reward or punishment for actions. You see? So could, is it possible? And the Bible, everything is backed by the Bible. That at the end, Paul says, I want to receive well done, that good and faithful servant. Is it possible to receive the negative in spite of what God has done? It's very possible. And that's why we're sharing what we're sharing. So that we do not frustrate the grace of God. Let's quickly go to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And we'll take that parable again. Parable of the sower. Mark chapter 4. Uh, I'm reading from verse... I'll just read uh, from verse um, 2. And uh, let me get to KK, K, um, NLT because it brings it out. He said, listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered it across some fields, his field, some of the seed fell on a path, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plant soon wilted under the hot sun. And since it didn't have deep root, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants so they produced low grain. Still, other seed fell on fertile soil and they sprouted, grew, and produced a crop that was 60, 30, 60, and even a hundred times as much as had been planted. So again, he said, then he said, anyone with ears to hear should listen and hear. You go through the Bible, you see Jesus always saying, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. What's that all about? Do, don't we all have ears? But it's a particular he, he, a type of hearing that he's referring to. It is inclination towards the spirit of God, opening our eyes to the spirit, and then he gives us the ability to understand. So even in that alone, if, so if we don't incline our ears to the spirit, we will not hear. So it's not just hearing. You can hear me physically now, but your spirit is receiving this word. So there are two levels of hearing. So if you incline your head to hear, to hear and open your spirit, then you receive. Praise the Lord. But what are we going in this one? Now let's go to uh, 43, 23 of that, um, of that, of this uh, place I've read. Number one, you know that there are levels of heart here. That's not what we want to talk about. But if you remember every single one of them, every single one of them, the constant is the earth. The soil doesn't change. The soil is the, uh, um, is, uh, no, okay, no, I'm talking about the wrong. The soil changes. It's the, what is contained in the soil that is making the difference. The seed is perfect. Every, the word of God is perfect. It's not corruptible. The Bible says we are born again of, corrupt, of incorruptible seed. It doesn't, it's not like some seed that are faulty. You know, like if you're you a farmer, you see some corn that is hollow. That seed will not germinate. God's word is incorruptible seed. It's perfect. So it will produce anytime the condition is right. So the variable is not God's word. God's word is always perfect. Always perfect. To, the, the Bible says that God is not a respecter of person. So even his word is not a respecter of person. Whenever that word is put to use, it will produce automatically. That's how God function, made it. The differences are the different types of soil that the seed is planted in. And that is the state of our hearts. Praise the Lord. So if it is the state of our heart, heart A is different. And if you, you could get to this parable, 25% of the heart is what produced, only 25%. My question to you today, are you among the 75? Are you among that special 25 that produced? And even in the 25%, there is 30, there is 60, there is 100 fold. You determine where you belong. You determine. Now let's go to 23 of this um, um, 23. It says, um, um, it says, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand again. You see again, if you have ears to listen, to hear, listen and understand. Then pay close attention to what you hear. We were just talking this morning about some of the things that can create um, seduction. What you hear is also important. The closer you listen, the more understanding you'll be given. Do you see? So in the kingdom, and that's what, one of the things we are talking about accountability. When you put in effort, more is given. That's why God didn't say, I will draw near to you, then you draw near to me. He said, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. With God, the, everything is always initiated by us. We determine the measure. We determine the amount. We determine how far we want to go. God is not a bully. And that's what Christians don't understand. 
They, some of us have turned the grace of God into lasciviousness. Not do anything. Don't even have faith. Don't do this. Don't do this. You don't do anything. No, it's not that way. It's not that way. Because that's why he says here, he says, the measure you give, okay, uh, another place in Matthew of this same scripture, talking about this same uh, parable of the soil, he said, the measure you give is the measure you will receive. The measure you give is the measure you'll receive. So if you're not putting in any measure, if you're not doing anything, then nothing comes back. Nothing comes back. He says, okay, and you receive even more. Say, the more understanding you'll be given, and you receive even more. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. So if I'm reading to understand, if and my spirit is open, then God will give me more. See, in the kingdom, God, God doesn't, uh, unfortunately, God doesn't uh, countenance laziness. God doesn't countenance on, on unproductivity. That's why we've been praying about um, bearing fruit during our Friday um, prayer and the uh, teaching. Bearing fruit. Because God doesn't accept it. Praise the Lord. He says, then, he said, for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. Do you see how things work in the kingdom? Now, if you don't use what you are giving, you are in danger of losing even that you have. And I keep saying it, and that's how it is sometimes. And it's a very uh, sovereign thought because in the world system, it's like, okay, take from the person that have more. Equalize. That's how the world thinks. That's socially equalized. Take from the rich, give to the poor. The poor that are not doing anything. It's not, the whole idea here is not to uh, say whether the, uh, the, it's not about um, what is right or what is not right. But God is not a Democrat. God is not socialist. God's own is different. God's system is different. God expects you to do. And because God is a fair God, we're going to see it. He says it is custom built, your gifts. And God doesn't expect you to give more than what he has given you. He will expect you to produce according to the gifts and callings of God he has put in your life. So, because if, if, if God is unjust, he will say, eh, okay, you, I gave you three. We're going to read the parable of the talent very soon. And then you, you should bring this. No, God is not like that. God is a righteous judge. Praise the Lord. So, again, let's go to 26 of that uh, scripture before we move on to uh, 26. Um, it says, the kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, night and day, while he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows, but he does not understand how it happens. I keep saying the earth is just made to bring out whatever is sown in it. That's how it is. Your heart is made to bring out whatever you are sowing in your heart. That's what will produce. Unfortunately, this thing will work in the positive and it will work in the negative. If my heart brings out anything, so if all I'm doing is, just as we discussed today, if I'm fellowshipping with movies that are not really um, godly and stuff, what, will, what am I planting in my heart? That's what my heart will produce. It's as simple as that. And it's unconscious. The heart must always produce something. Garbage in, garbage out. It's automatic. So if I'm consciously then, like a farmer who's cut a seed on, if I'm not planting the word of God in my heart, night and day, something is happening. You don't need to see. Because with God, with, with the things of God, we don't need to see it. It's not something we'll feel. It's not something we taste. All you will notice is that there's result. You so it says night and day. While you are sleeping and waking up, does that talk, not tell you of constancy? While you're sleeping and waking up, as long as you're doing what you're doing, the seed, the seed sprouts and grows. Grows, but you don't understand how it happens because it's been structured by default. I keep saying it that ordinary egg will try to produce anything. That's why even a pole a pole that you use to uh, hang clothes. The earth will try to start um, germinating that pole. It's not succeeding. That's why that bottom is rotted. The earth is doing its job. It will always do its job. And the earth is like our heart. It will always do its job. Our job is what are you planting? What are you planting in your heart? What is your heart receiving? Praise the Lord. And you say what you are hearing too. What you are hearing. Take heed. Take heed. What you hear what you hear, what you hear. And it's very important. If I'm hearing the word of God all the time, because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, what will happen? Automatically, my faith will increase. I keep saying it. I know this one. I know it works. 
Before, I never thought that even news, constantly listening to news will affect me in any way. And I used to listen to news all the time. Even when I'm studying, I'll put BBC News or whatever behind the scenes. I need to be, but what does news? I want to tell you everything about news. Hardly do you have good news that is, you will not hear, oh, everything is right. Everybody, the sun is shining today. Yeah, they will say the sun is shining with the weather, but they will say everything is okay. What makes news is bad news. That's what makes news. So what am I hearing all the time? So tsunami here, trouble here, blah, blah, blah. Constantly going in. I was struggling with my faith. I was struggling. And I didn't know why I didn't, I wasn't operating. I didn't know why. And that's the, the problem with a lot of Christians. What we are hearing, we are hearing all the negatives in this world. So how do you expect, how do you expect to prosper with those news, with the things you hear? Outside of it, some people even go as far as listening to uh, secular music. And secular music will talk about a lot of rubbish. Some of them have curse words. What are you feed? What are you listening to? What are you listening to? He says here, what you're putting in is what you will get out. Your heart produces, whether you know it or not, whether you're conscious about it or not. Praise the Lord. So he says, first a blade. The earth produces the crops on its own. It doesn't struggle. This is what it is made to produce. Your heart doesn't struggle to produce. The problem is what you're feeding it in. What you're feeding it in. First a leaf. A leaf blade pushes through. Then the heads of wheat are formed. And finally the grain ripens. And as soon as the, the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle. For the harvest time has come. So, sure banker, whatever you're putting in, you will harvest it. Whatever you are putting in, you harvest it. But my prayer today is that if you've been putting in negative things, if you've been planting evil, bad things, bad words, bad seeds, you will reap a crop failure today in the name of Jesus. So that is what the word of God is saying. Praise the Lord. So now, um, let's go to Matthew 25. Remember when we were talking about accountability in the kingdom? Matthew 25. Matthew 25, praise the Lord, from, from verse 14. From verse 14, it says, um, Matthew 25 from verse 14. It says, the, again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted this money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one to another and to, to another and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. Do you see that? So our father is not unrighteous according to their abilities. He then left on his trip. So this is referring to, it's like God. You know, it's according to this uh, parable. One is giving five bags of silver. Another one, two. Another one, one. To the last, dividing it in proportion to the abilities he then left on his trip. So he left. Then the servant who received the five bags of silver, remember five, he got five, began to invest the money and earned five more. So he earned, he invested 100% of five. See, with God again, one thing with our father is percentage. That's why I say our father is a righteous God. He works according to percentage. Do you not understand why even the tithe, he says, bring you all the tithe into the storehouse. It's according to percentage. If God is not working according to percentage, then a person that is, uh, percentage is, percent it doesn't matter the amount, it's percentage. And that is in line with the fair nature of God. That is how our father is. He doesn't expect you to do beyond what he has put in you. The gifts and the callings he has put in you. All he's expecting you to do is to be fruitful with what he has given you to produce, praise the Lord, to be accountable to what he has given you. So, so the one that got five bags, made five more. The one that got two bags, two bags of silver, made two more, 100%. So it doesn't matter the, the, the original amount, it's percentage here. So dividing it in proportion. So now the servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. Dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. What could be the excuse? It could be anything. It could be uh, low, uh, low self-esteem. It could be 
because of the background, uh, people, nobody in my family has ever amounted to this. It could be, I can't do anything. It could be ordinary laziness. It could be slothfulness. It could be whatever it is, whatever is the excuse. But in this particular case, he said, you will hear what he says about the master. So the servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward and with five bags, with five more and said, master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. That, that's what I, be, I believe in God that every one of us will receive on this platform in Jesus' name. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many, many more responsibility. Let's celebrate together. So you see in the kingdom, when you show God that what he has invested in you, you are fruitful with it, then he will give you more. God doesn't jump ranks. You see, and with God, you will start small. God starts small with every one of us. There is, with God, there's always a backside of the desert experience for every one of us. And what we are doing in the backside of that desert, like Moses, 40 years, shepherding animals, and he thinks that God, God doesn't, all everything his mother has told him that, I believe you are going to be a deliverer, blah, 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 it has even washed away. All his um, uh, prowess in Egypt, because he was a mighty general, mighty in words, mighty man, he has forgotten in the 40 years. But, see, if we are not faithful, it is when we are faithful in that when we are hidden in the backside of the desert, that's when we are celebrated in the open. And what we do, those little, little things we do when we are forgotten in that backside is what determines our promotion because this is how it works in the kingdom. When we are faithful with the little that God has given to us, he's going to promote us. God promotes us. But some people, they don't want, they, even in the faith, the little that God has given, they have failed God. I don't even want to go into the area of money here. But what are you doing? God expects us to be accountable. God expects us to produce with whatever little. Some of us may be crying out to God, Lord, prosper me. Lord, prosper me. Lord, prosper. And God is watching you with what he has given you. Remember, it's according to percentage. According, if you're not faithful with your 1,000 pounds, and then you're expecting God to make you a millionaire. God will not give you stuff that will take you away from him. That's not how a good father works. Because it's not, what is money? Ultimately, God wants all his children to come back to him. So ultimately, it's make it when we are there. So we, 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 a responsible father give to a child what to destroy. God is checking our heart. Our heart situation makes all the difference. Makes all the difference. So now, this, the second one came. The, I'm reading verse um, 21. The master was full of praise. And then the servant, uh, I'm now jumping to 22. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest and I have in earned two more. The master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You see the same praise, even though the amount is different because of God works with percentages. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. See, so isn't it wonderful that whatever level, what will end that accolade at that time is not whether you have won a whole city. It's what you have done with the little that God has given you. It doesn't even make you, so God will not expect me to be whoever, who he has not made me to be. God expects me to be fruitful in my corner, in my corner to use what he has given me. So now the servant with the one bag, I'm now jumping to 24, with the one bag of silver, I came and said, Master, I know you are very, you were a harsh man. Harvesting crops you don't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. So now see the problem, the perception of that servant with the master. Could, is, is it possible? And a lot of people see God that way. They see God as a harsh God with a stick ready to find them a contravene, you know, like break any law and God will, will, will will clobber your head with stick. If you see God that way, it will not really make you to produce because even your efforts will be more of legalism. You're not working out of love. You see? So this man thought that this master is harsh. That this master, how can you even expect, what can you expect to reap where you didn't sow? According to this man, and that harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. It's his master. It's his Lord. He owns him. 
God is our Lord. He owns us. So we cannot. He says, how can a potter say to him that uh, uh, created him, how, why did you make me so? It's not your right. It's not your right. We are creatures. We, he made us. He made us. So he has that sovereignty to determine what he expects us to be, what he determines, what he has put in us. So this is that guy. That's it. Why, why, why did he even give me? Why did you give me? The, it's the Lord. He has the right. So I was afraid I would lose your money. So see again another big issue. Fear. Fear. A lot of people, a lot of Christians. Fear. What if I fail? What if they laugh at me? What if, what if, what if? Fear. And then and some of us are so in what they call in what pride. I don't want to be laughed at. Who are you? Your reputation should be in God. You shouldn't be afraid of what people will say. It's because we are so proud. That's why you are thinking about what people will say about you. Who are you to be even be thinking about it? We are not, we are God's children. Everything we are doing, if they laugh at me if I'm representing God, they're laughing at my father and he's big enough to carry the, his reputation. It could be God has God is big enough. He's big enough. He has showed that big show that big enough to, to take care of himself, to take care of his reputation. We are to do our bit. Praise the Lord. So I was afraid. I will lose your money. So I hid it in the air. Look, here is your money back. So I'm just uh, encouraging us, brothers and sisters. God is not going to receive whatever he has put in us. God is not going to uh, take it in that same format. It, we will not hear well done, that good and faithful servant in that day. That's why the Bible says that some people's work, some people will be saved and yet as by fire because their works will be burnt. What are you doing? What are you doing with the gifts and the talents God has put in you? Praise the Lord. So he says, and then, what did the master say? The master, you wicked and lazy servant. May it never be our portion in Jesus' name. You wicked and lazy. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money? So God is after interest. God is after interest. Bring a return. Return. Are you returning to God? Is God getting return from what he has deposited in you? What he has put in you? Are you just there? For one reason or the other, just there. Just there. May God help us in Jesus' name. So, he says, and did he cultivate? Um, again, why didn't you deposit my money? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, look at where the danger is. It's not just what you hear at the end. He said, he ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the 10 bags of silver. You see how God works. He takes from you that is not making use of it and gives it to the person that is producing more. I'm sure you don't want to lose I'm sure you don't want to lose, to lose here. But if you're not, if you're sitting on the grace of God, what God has put in you, you are in danger of losing it. That's why I say with God, God is not, this is not socialism. This is not. It's the opposite of socialism. God doesn't take from the people that have and give to the people that don't have. That's not, unfortunately, sorry, this is how God thinks. So God expects, what did he call him? Lazy and slothful. Are you lazy and slothful? Where are you? You see, one of the things that God showed me, Jesus, remember Jesus? He was in every synagogue. Every time he was going to a synagogue. All the miracles were in the synagogue. That synagogue is exactly what represents the church today. Yes, some Christians, even to go to church is a problem for them. The Bible says in Hebrews, is it Hebrews 10, 25, forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together. Even to go to church to worship God is a big problem. Meanwhile, Jesus, that is our example, every time Jesus was in the synagogue, that's where he will see a man with the withered hand. That's how we will see. So where are we getting that example of that we're okay by ourselves? God cursed COVID. Thank God we are coming out of this situation. But whatever it is, it's not because God knows we are not wired that way. He said we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Praise the Lord. I'm done speaking to somebody here. You cannot make it on your own. Christians are not wired that way. You belong to a body. You belong to. So that's part of the reason of not returning because you cannot produce food in that way. And where do you, what is the condition? Where is the arena? Where is the atmosphere? Where is the, you know, I, can, I don't know the particular word I'm trying to get. Where you'll be producing food? It is in the body. It is in the church. As you serve God, that's how you produce food both outside and in church. That's how you produce food for God. And that's how, and that's how God does. Many of us, 
I, I'm not, I'm not yet, I believe I'm not even near where God wants to take me. But we started from just being consistent with God. And then maybe it could be teaching Sunday school. And then maybe God will promote you and make you maybe Sunday school person, uh, t- uh, teacher. Then from there to nobody, nobody starts with God and, uh, and you become mighty. It doesn't work that way. The hand that cannot even wash toilet cannot heal. That's how it works in the kingdom. A man of God was sharing an example of a, somebody that came to his uh, Bible school. And the guy, guy had this, um, you know, he's been encouraging them, knowing who you are, your identity in Christ, you know, you are the head and not the tail, you are above only and not beneath, blah, blah, blah. So he took it all, oh, that's great. So he came and showed the man of God that he wants to do something for the youth. So he gave him this, he has done a, a business plan concerning this, very awesome. But it's costing a lot around like you will need like 20 something million dollars to affect it. He has stage one of their life where they'll go to stage two, where they'll go to stage three. The man of God now looked at him and said, um, the plan is good, but it's not going to work. He was like taking a back. Like, why would you say it's not going to work? He said, you've never even, why will it work? You've never even dealt, you've not even held any position before. You have not done anything with children. You haven't even started our, our, in that area. You haven't even like you are doing it in the backside of the desert. And then suddenly you're expecting God to raise 20 something million to give you for something you have not done before. God works with process. God, that's what some Christians don't understand. God works with process. Here, little here, up here, he keeps promoting, he keeps, that's how God is. And as he said it, he told him, he told him straight on, it's not going to work. Take my word, it's not going to work. If that guy had done that, maybe by hook or crook or whatever, I convince people, it's not, it's going to fail because it doesn't, he has not been tested, it's not been proved in the process. So this is how. So the 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 body of Christ gives us opportunity, and that body of Christ, your area of service may be your local church where you are planted. Serve God in that area, serve God, whether you are IT whether you are doing a, a, a arranging chairs, whether your children's ministry, whatever it is, serve God to the utmost of your ability. That is that one, the talent that God has given you. As God sees you that way, you will increase your kingdom responsibility. That is how God works. Praise the Lord. That is how God works in the kingdom. So now, you remember that place we read again, um, Mark 4, 24 to 25. Let's quickly go there again. Now, but I just wanted to, so before we go there, Matthew 25, he says, and the, he says, take the money from this servant. I give it to the one with the 10 bags of silver. To those who use well, to those who use well, what they are given, even more will be given and they will have an abundance. You see how abundance works in the kingdom. But to, from those who do nothing, may you not belong to this category. For those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It will never be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. But do you see where that servant ended up? Do you see where he ended up? May he not be a portion. Praise the Lord. See where he ended up. Okay, so let's quickly go again to that Mark 4 that I read again. Because it's substantiating Mark 4, Mark 4, 23 again to 25. I just, I read it before. See, um, 23 to 20. Yes, it says here. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen. Let me read it in a KJV. Um, yes, uh, 24. Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. So you determine the measure. That's what I want to bring out here. You determine the measure. You determine the measure. So if I am serious and I'm putting in a lot of measure, it's just what will come back to me. You see? And so, and it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall not be given. Again, if you go through the Bible, keep saying, what are you hearing? What are you hearing? What are you hearing? For he that hath, to him shall be given. Again, do you see that again? For he that hath, shall him shall be given. And he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he had. This is how it works in the kingdom. So that's why in the kingdom, there is no place for slack soldiers. We are soldiers. 
He said, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, we are to be, we are in the war front all the time. But may we not be in this category that what we have getting is taken from us. I give it to somebody who is producing. I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself. Because we go, we don't really, we have not arrived. We want to keep being there, being there, increasing, producing, returning to God, returning to God more out of what he has put upon us. So we're going to ask the Lord, please, Father, help me. Help me. Show me areas where I am sitting on the grace of God, where I am frustrating your grace, where I am frustrating your grace. You know that God, you know when we're talking about gifts here, it could be anything that special grace has been given to you. It could be even in the area of giving. It could be in the area of intercessory prayer. It could be anything that God puts in you. And you know it. Because it's what you do without so much effort. You know that is the grace of God upon your life. But are you frustrating that grace? Or are you flourishing in it? So that's our prayer today. We are going to ask the Lord to help every one of us that we will not frustrate the grace, of, the grace of God upon our lives. That we will not be like this servant that is gift, the talents was taken, the money was given, the deposit was given to somebody else who is producing, that will begin to make, produce in the kingdom. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to, let's ask God to help every one of us. Let's ask God to help us.